Before we get to that, uh, we want to have a fan ask a question. So would you please come up and ask your question right now? Hi. What is your name and what is your question? Uh, my name is Heather. Uh, Kim, if a zombie apocalypse was your reality, do you think you would handle it the same way as your character? Um, oh, God, no. I would be terrible. <laughs> I, I wish I could. I wish I was as good as she is, but no. <laughs> You know, I have a very special present for you. Oh, uh, my goodness. Oh, it has blood on it, It too. does have blood on it, yeah. Well, we had to clean the fence off. They're watching up on shore oh now. Oh, my gosh. So I want you to take this logbook. Uh, things do not look good all up and down the coast. And then uh, this, oh, my God! Oh, no, it's just foam. It's fine. Yeah, it's, just, like, it's, just, it's just bendy. It's foamy that uh, you can wield that and hit people in the face if you want to, and they'll be out. Well, actually, don't do that. I just said that on live television. Don't hit anyone in the face. Enjoy your logbook. Thank you so much for asking your question. I feel so bad. You're just stuck up against the wall there. Do you want to just come sit here? Here, come sit in this chair. Come sit. Sure. I mean, I know you were just kind of stuck up against the wall and didn't know where to go. It feels nice, right? Yeah, it feels great. It's kind of the captain's chair, sort of. Um, so what did it mean to Madison uh, that her... How are you doing? Great. Good. Uh, what did it mean to Madison uh, that, that, that Melissa wanted her to take the kid on the Abigail? Um... You know, I think it was it was a tall order for Madison, and it, it's hard to it was hard for Madison to imagine being able to do that, and make that sacrifice. So, so Madison just just had to help her do that. You know. Do you agree with this assessment? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Lindy, what does it say about Strand that he denies saving a child? Um, well, I think Strand just has his own agenda, and he's sticking to it, um, come hell or high water, and uh, he's got a plan. And I don't think maybe it, maybe it's not necessarily about helping or hurting anyone, it's just he has an agenda and he's going to see it through. Also, it seemed a little bit like he gave in to Madison by the, in the end, but we didn't really get a chance to see if he actually did or not because then, you know, poop hit the fan. Well, let's, um, let's throw it over to Heather. Heather, oh uh, Strand, misunderstood, misunderstood good guy or flat out dick? Uh, dick. All right, great. <laughs> Kim. I enjoy having the fan point of view on this. You're doing a very nice job. Um, so what, what do you think is going through Madison's mind as they pull away from the dock? Well, I think, you know, at that point, once they're pulling away, there's no turning back. You know, and first of all, also, we weren't invited to stay there. People are like, why don't you stay there? Th that was their place. That was right. Seth. You know, it was like, we weren't really invited. But we pull away. There's no turning back. And I think Madison just feels like all she can do is honor it and face it. What's happening? Yeah. With Melissa. Well, the guy, and the guy has a weird moment with Travis where the guy's like, I love you people so much. And he's like, dude, chill out. I yeah, went yeah. there once, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. The guy really is freaking out, but it's all about being reclaimed by the earth, and this is yeah. part of the natural cycle. Uh, who do you think's on the phone? Who do you think Strand calls on the phone? Oh, gosh, I don't know. Please don't ask me. Okay, Lou. <laughs> Lou, you don't seem nervous. You're doing great. Uh, and your hair is awesome, by the way. Your hair is awesome. Um, Lou, who, who do you think Strand is talking to on the phone? Oh, see, well, the, that's impossible to know. But what it, what, what it begs, first of all, first of all, Coleman Domingo is, is the illegitimate spawn of, of Sidney Poitier and Idris Elba. Yes. So yeah. I'm with that. You know, he's got the manliness, and yet he's got, you know, Sidney Poitier's articulation. But, um... <laughs> uh, him being on the phone to somebody else begs the question to me, going back to last season, what was Strand doing in containment? Why was he there? He yeah. was not sick like Nick or Griselda or anybody else that was in there. He, he doesn't seem to be a person who is uh, prone to civil dis disobedience. Why was he in containment? And now when he got out, why was he so prepared to leave? There is, there is an, an Uber story here uh, uh, that uh, uh, is going to play out for the rest of the season, and I am very, very interested in it. Yes. Uh, how does it feel to sit from this to the, this point of view? Does it feel like it does when you see it on TV? It's pretty nuts. It is pretty nuts, <laughs> right. It's like I live in this weird fake apartment that's missing half of it, and it's just like... <laughs> There's no ceiling. I just invite people to come sit and watch me talk to my friends on the couch. Do you want to um, ask the next question? Is there a question that looks particularly compelling to you that you want to ask? Yeah, yeah. Okay, go. So say the person's name who wrote it and then... Okay, from Coralyn Newton, at Coralyn Newton. Uh, if you were... Oh, you're, you're not mic'd, I'm sorry. Oh. At Coralyn Newton. <laughs> this is not awkward. If you were bitten, would you want to be killed or wait until you became undead to be killed? Undead. I want to see what it's like. Mm -hmm. You do? Yeah. You think it's, you think it's amazing? Well, amazing might be. 
be a stretch. I mean, I, I don't know what it's like. So. You know, I, I have long had a theory about this that maybe being a walker or, or, a, or infected is like, maybe it's like, maybe it's like an eternal orgasm that just never <laughs> ends. Yeah. And that's why they're always like, uh, you know, like, you don't know. We just kill them all the time. Get the munchies. Yeah, the munchies. exactly. <laughs> exactly. But a huge hand for Heather for helping me. Uh, this. Great job, Heather. Coming up, we have an interview with Mercedes Mason, who plays Ophelia. We're going to show our favorite fan art of the week, plus a very exciting sneak peek of next uh, week's all-new episode of Fear. But first, let's enjoy Dead Buzz, tweets we like from real-life fans like you. Please enjoy. <laughs> When Ophelia says to her father, understanding this world helps me understand you, it speaks volumes. I think it's the first time since everything's fallen apart and she's lost everything that Ophelia understands who her father is. And even though she may not forgive him, she's finally starting to understand that when you're dealing with dire circumstances, you have to do things to survive. It's not that he's a sociopath, it's that's all he knew. I think it's the first time she's seeing her father in a different light. And it's not accusatory, it's not trying to punish him. It's genuinely saying, I see you. I finally see you for who you are. Welcome back to Talking Dead. I'm Chris Harvey. That was Mercedes Mason, who plays Ophelia Salazar and her relationship with her father. I'm back with Lou and Lindy and Kim. Just looking at stuff online uh, at the break. Uh, so so uh, the, the, the lady who helped us co-host the last segment, at Heather Shalan, C-H-E-L-A-N. Send her a tweet and tell her that she did a great job. She did a fantastic job. <laughs>